So today is gonna be a fun day because we are gonna be unboxing a Sega Dreamcast. I found this on eBay and it looked like it was in pretty good shape, but it said in the description that it does not read any games. And I thought that was interesting because it's boxed. It actually has some of the stuff inside of the box that I was even looking for, which we'll take a look at soon. So I figured, hey, we could unbox it here. Should be a lot of fun doing that. And then we'll try to get it to work and have a fully complete working inbox Sega Dreamcast by the end of this video. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Small Web channel, make sure you subscribe down below. First, let's start by taking a look around the box. And I do like this Dreamcast box. It's very dramatic looking with the Dreamcast controller here like this. And you have the horizon and going across with like this little flare right there. But the, of course, the iconic swirl, Dreamcast, the ultimate gaming system. And if we flip it over, we can we can see one of the, uh, the most interesting description here at the top for a system. It says, congratulations, of course, big lettering there. Congratulations, Cupcake. You hold the future in your hands, not just the future of gaming, your booty's future. That's right, because Dreamcast's built-in 56K modem means you can play tons of Dreamcast games across the internet right now. And it's upgradable for DSL and broadband, of course. So just plug into any phone line, you're, in, you're on to millions of wonderful people, wonderful people, <laughs> across this great nation who want nothing more than to mop the floor with you. The awesome 128-bit graphics. We were still fresh off the bit war with the Nintendo 64 and the, we had the Jaguar and the, and the Super Nintendo Genesis, all that. We were moving away from it going into the generation with the PS2 and the GameCube and all that, but they still wanted to make sure that we did see 128-bit graphics. I mean, you can watch the, that happen in jaw-dropping detail, but sling not included. And we can see Sonic Adventure 2, Fantasy Star Online, Quake 3 Arena, NFL 2K1, Shenmue, and Craze Taxes. So this should be this would be like a later uh, version of the Dreamcast than as Sonic Adventure 2 would have been out. So this wasn't expertly packed inside of the box itself. They did a good job packaging the system inside of another box with bubble wrap everywhere because while the box does have wearing around the corners, it's actually not in terrible shape based on how a lot of these cardboard boxes from like the late 90s and early 2000s ended up. Right away we have the Dreamcast itself still has the the clear plastic around it here. Let's see how this looks. It's it's in all right shape. It has uh, some scuffing around. I mean, it is it is an all white system, so it's going to attract dirt and dust and all of this other stuff, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. The door pops right open, so we'll have to run a quick test on this in a minute to see what's going on when it comes to reading games. We do have the modem, little modem here, so we can plug in and you play, I guess, Fantasy Star. I think Fantasy Star is still, actually, they have a version you can still play on your Dreamcast. Then we have all of our cables that are just kind of bundled up, just the AV cables and the power cord. And then we have our controller. The controller is also bagged up here, and while it is wound up, as it ended up being with the Dreamcast itself, because they kind of promoted that, even though I'm not a huge fan of winding the controller around. I mean, they kind of told people to do that just to get the cable to go around the, the top of it where you'd wind it down around. The reason I don't like that is because you end up with this, a lot of pressure on this bottom part here, and sometimes you'd actually have a broken connection that way. But that aside, the controller does look to be in pretty good shape. All the buttons press well. There's some scratching here across the center, but everything else feels fine. And we also have all of those little dots still in pretty good shape here. None of them have been rubbed off or anything from use. But that wasn't everything that you get when you bought a Dreamcast. You would actually get some pack-in games. Well, one in particular, the other was the web browser 2.0 disc. And a lot of times, yes, it would still be sealed because there were quite a few people who just never used this. I mean, browsing the internet on the Dreamcast wasn't exactly great unless you had the keyboard. And even then it was like, it was okay, I guess. It was interesting because your console was browsing the web and it wasn't like your computer doing it, but this one is indeed still sealed. So uh, I guess we can pop it open real quick and open at least a piece of Dreamcast software for the first time. There's the web browser 2.0 disc. However, this is something I was really excited to see in the packaging. This is like a legendary demo disc for me. That When I got my Dreamcast, this is pretty much what I played constantly until I was finally able to save some money and, you know, buy a game for it. But check this out. If you bought a Dreamcast, you probably know all about 
this demo disc here. It was pretty good overall. Like it had Tomb Raider, you could play some of that. I remember playing MDK2. Uh, a lot of people played Sonic Adventure because this had the original level with the big whale that would uh, run and splash behind you. Dead or Alive 2, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver. There was quite a bit here just for a demo disc that came with it. A good way to get you started. And I don't know if this has really been used before. A lot of times this part would have been ripped off of here and it's kind of sitting in there. Now this looks really good. Not a scratch on it all. I don't, I don't think it's been used yet, which should make it a good candidate to test the Dreamcast itself to see if it is having a hard time reading. Uh, to hook it up to the monitor, I'm gonna use one of these Hyperkin HDMI cables that I have laying around. I don't necessarily recommend these because they're not the best in terms of quality, but for what really what I need now, which is just to be able to get it up on an HDMI display for testing, it should be fine. So it starts right up and you have to go through and set the, the time itself. I'm not gonna do that completely right now because most times the battery inside has gone bad. I mean, it's an older system now, so you'd wanna go in and change that out. But anyway, we're to the menu now, so we'll pop the generator volume two disc in and we'll see if it tries to read it. It doesn't sound good. I will say that it sounds like the laser itself is having a hard time maybe moving or seeing the disc as it is now. And it does not sound like it's gonna read, unfortunately. It still says, please wait while the disc is being checked. And it's just the laser keeps, sounding like keeps resetting in the center as it's looking for the disc. You might be able to hear it, but it, it sounds pretty bad. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open this up. Yeah, please insert game disc. We're gonna open this up and see if the laser, is there any obvious issues with it. And if not, I, I think I might have this laser that we can change it out with to see if that fixes it. See, the nice thing about the Dreamcast, it really doesn't take much to get inside of it. I mean, the lid is held on by like four Phillips head screws, and then you can take a look at the laser immediately. All right, so here we are with our laser assembly here. Everything inside, you know what? Looks extremely clean. Like, it's, it's always weird to see a system that's struggling to do something like read a disc, and then you open it up and it looks like it's barely been used. I mean, even the fan looks very, very clean right there. So well, the good news is we can start by taking this laser up, unscrew some of this, get the assembly out and see what's going on. So here's something interesting. I noticed I'm missing some screws. Like there's no screws for this assembly holding it down. It just kind of, it just lifts right up. There's generally supposed to be some screws if I remember right, holding this down, but this one does not have that. So it does appear that someone at least opened it up to get to this point. So I don't know if somebody tried to fix it themselves or change it out at some point. I almost wonder if I can just take this assembly that I have, this one here, and just swap it. I don't know if the boards are married or anything like that. I guess I can just try it very quickly to see if that'll fix it. It's all one piece. You can see it slots in right down here at the bottom, plug in there. And after that, I should be able to just test it and see if we get anything. Otherwise, I can move this laser assembly over to this board right here. All right, so we're back to the menu. Pop the disc down here, close it, and we'll see if it is able to read. Sounds like it's spinning up. Yep, and there it goes immediately. So I just happen to have that assembly laying around and I guess you can just change these out without too much issue for that. Uh, I'm assuming that whoever had this originally, it wasn't reading, maybe they opened it up to check it out because it is missing a couple of screws, which would also explain why it was so clean inside. Maybe they decided, oh, we'll try cleaning it to see if that would fix it. But either way, change the assembly out with the laser itself. And here we are now with the Dreamcast sampler disc. I mean, just look at how ridiculous this demo disc was. And remember this came with the system. So if you weren't, if you were a little younger maybe, and you didn't, you know, go out and buy all of these games, this was such a cool thing to get with it. Cause like Sonic Adventure, Tomb Raider, The Last Revelation, Fur Fighters, Railroad Tycoon 2, MDK 2, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1, Rayman 2, Dead or Alive 2. There's a lot of good stuff here. So here, for example, is Tony Hawk Pro Skater. And what happens with this is you just press start, you go through and it immediately throws you into the warehouse level where you can play through as Tony Hawk for a couple of minutes. And you could just do that over and over again. I remember playing this one several times on the Dreamcast. It is very difficult to see from here, actually. Uh, but I remember playing through this several times. This demo disc is mostly what I used at the time to play my Dreamcast, just because I didn't really have a lot uh, to play when I first got it for Christmas. I remember Christmas Day, you had what you had. And I remember I didn't really get any games with it. So I just played this demo disc 
all of Christmas day and then the next. And then I believe like two or three days later, I finally was able to go out to the store and buy an actual Dreamcast game. This may have been the most mind blowing demo though, the Sonic Adventure trial version, because you don't have any of the beginning part where you have to go through like the, like the opening story section. It just throws you into Emerald Coast immediately. So at the time coming from the Nintendo 64 or the PS1, and then you go to this where you're running away from the like the huge whale and the bridge is collapsing. It was super impressive then. I mean, it still looks pretty good now, especially if you're running through like the DC HDMI, the, the Dreamcast board that does HDMI out at 1080p. It still looks very, very sharp now with the Dreamcast visuals the way it worked. But at the time, I was just absolutely blown away by how this game looked compared to everything else around it. Even when the even when the PS2 came out, you know what? I was still pretty impressed by the Dreamcast itself because I remember the Dreamcast still just looking sharper than what we had with the PS2 at the time. The PS2 still looked pretty soft in comparison to the Dreamcast. And it wasn't until like maybe two years into the PS2's life that it really started to separate itself from the Dreamcast. And by then the Dreamcast was pretty much done anyway. Sega really ran into a lot of issues with that system as the PS2 went along. Um, but like you see this and think about this in like 1999 and it's just way above anything else. And guys, it's gonna do it here for the Sega Dreamcast. It was really fun to get one off of eBay that was all boxed up with the manual and the demo disc that brings back a ton of memories and being able to repair it so that it now reads discs completely. I mean, it's a completely stock system now. I could use it as like a project in the future, but I don't know, maybe I'll just leave it stock, able to read games with no problems just to have it complete in the box. But let me know what you guys think about this one down below. Do you still remember the day that you got home with your Sega Dreamcast, opened it up and maybe played this demo disc here that I remember so fondly? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.